Hey guys, welcome to my channel. My name is Tamar Mizels and I recently just taught my 10 month old baby Yael to sleep through the night without any night nursing. This is my third time going through this process of sleep training and I did the same thing with her two older siblings when they were about eight months old. At 10 months, I was feeding her every three hours and absolutely exhausted, back at work, drinking lots of cups of coffee, and just really trying to survive. I realized after a few really difficult nights that it was my time to get Yael to sleep through the night. So when is the best time to start sleep training? And the answer to this is when you and your baby are ready. So when is baby ready? This really depends a lot about your own personal philosophy about babies, what your pa pediatrician is saying, also really what your feelings are about your specific baby, what is your intuition, is do you feel that he's already ready? Sometimes I see on YouTube a lot of Americans are sleep training all through the night at 12 weeks, eight weeks, um, different things like that, I guess because they have less of a maternity leave so they're keen on getting back to work and uh, you know, being so sleep deprived is really hard once you're back at work. Israelis are usually more relaxed about this. They usually let their babies nurse breastfeed during the night till about age one. I have seen different medical opinions. I'll link down below. Some say between four and six months your baby is ready to sleep through the night without feeding. Some say around six months, eight months, one year. Uh, so these are all valid opinions. Because basically when babies are first born and as newborns they need to eat every two to three hours and then at some point they no longer need this. They're getting enough nutrition during the day and they're able to take longer stretches but they've already gotten used to eating every two to three hours and they kind of use it more as a habit and a means of going back to sleep. That's when you want to come in and nudge them um, to sleep without using food as a means to help them get back to sleep. Now, depending on your specific opinion, it could be at four months, six months, eight months, or even a year, but most babies will need a bit of a nudge in order to stop this habit and just sleep longer stretches without nursing. So whenever you and your doctor and baby are comfortable, then you can do this nudge to help them stop this habit. And when it comes to mom being ready, you have to be ready and feel ready like you want to begin sleeping your nights you're ready to take this few day process it's not the easiest process but you're willing to do it in order to get better sleep one of my sisters-in-law she has no problem nursing during the night co-sleeping and it doesn't really bother her so if you're happy with the way things are going then don't do anything you don't have to sleep train there's no harm in your baby waking up and feeding at night um, you have to feel ready and you have to feel like it's the right thing for you to do. Okay, so let's get into some of the steps. Now, the first step is to become convinced that this is the right thing for you and your baby to do. Read research about it, talk to your pediatrician. Don't start this process before you're absolutely convinced that this is the right move for you. Step two is make sure your baby is eating a little bit less during the night. So what this means is if your baby is used to waking up at night and eating a lot, you're gonna wanna take a few nights, maybe a week, to try to lower the amount that they're feeding because that way when you cut off the feeds, it will be less dramatic for them and they're not eating that much during the night. So you wanna take a few nights just to lower their intake of how much they're nursing or how much they're bottle feeding. For me, I did take a few nights just to make sure that she was eating a little bit less during the night, nursing no more than, let's say, two minutes. And that way I knew that when I was gonna cut off the meals and even a dream feed, at this age they don't even need a dream feed or don't even, I don't even suggest you leave one meal uh, I think it confuses them when they do have a meal. I think it's easier to just decide that there's no more meals. So take a few nights and lower the amounts. And the third one is get a mental coach. Now, this doesn't have to be a professional sleep coach that you're paying. It could also be a friend of yours, a mom, a sister, someone that could kind of hold your hand mentally and help you and tell you that you're doing the right thing. And also a lot of small little questions arise like the baby starts waking up really early or there's all these little things that 
It doesn't have to be some expert. It could be just someone that did this process before you, a friend or a mom. In my case, I was gonna take a sleep coach for a few hundred checkouts, but my mother just said, I'll be your coach and I'll answer your questions. And I had a few questions for her and she just, you know, Googled it or whatever and told me the answer. And these questions aren't, you know, brain science. You don't have to necessarily be an expert, but just someone that is supporting you, that knows that they're there to answer your questions and just to be there for you because those few nights are not the easiest and it really helps to just have someone at your back that's not your spouse, just someone else. The next step is to wait for a night when your baby isn't sick or isn't teething, kind of things faded away and you know that your baby is feeling good, she had a good day, he or she had a good day and um, their room is comfortable, you know that they're not gonna be too hot or too cold, you check the room, uh, so take away any of those uh, external things and just wait for a night where everything is looking good. So then you're gonna want to feed your baby, nurse your baby, or if you're bottle feeding, so give your baby a bottle about a half hour to an hour before bedtime. Now the baby's bedtime is usually about seven to eight and they're gonna sleep around 11 hours. I'll link below a specific chart that tells you how much daytime and nighttime sleep your child needs. Uh, so if they're going to sleep around 7, 8, that means that they're gonna wake up around 6 a.m. During those 11 hours, you are not going to, you're not going to nurse your baby. Okay, so then seven to eight, you see that your baby is a little bit tired. You're ready to put your baby to bed. Now you wanna do this without any props. You don't wanna rock them or nurse them to sleep. You wanna just maybe hold them for about a minute, put them in their bed, uh, maybe with a pacifier. I actually did use a pacifier and that's why for a few weeks I had to wake up once or twice during the night and give um, the baby her pacifier and either you're gonna want to do this process without the pacifier, meaning put them to bed without the pacifier, or if they like using their pacifier, you're gonna want to get them to learn how to pick up their pacifier in their bed and put it in their mouth. So the next step is at this point, if they cry, what you're gonna wanna do, and this is the same thing you're gonna do during those 11 hours, if this happens during the night, your baby's gonna wake up, want to eat, want to be calm down, and what you're gonna do is you're gonna take about one minute or maybe two minutes and you're just gonna wait. I know it's hard, you just have to listen to your baby, cry, and after about one or two minutes, you're gonna go in for about 20 seconds, just pat your baby, put the pacifier back in, calm them down, and then you're going to leave. And then you're gonna do this each time. If it happens again, you're gonna add to the minute. So I did one minute, then two minutes, then three minutes. I saw some increments talked about five minutes and then 10 minutes. I was a little bit soft and I wanted it to be calm. So even one minute, two minutes was really hard for me. So I did with smaller increments about one minute, two minute, three minutes. That was enough for me. Within two nights, she really got it and was just going to sleep by herself. Okay, the next point is to be consistent. Now this is really hard. You're hearing your baby you know, cry for those few minutes and it's really, really hard, but it really only takes a few short nights for us. Within two, three nights, she was sleeping the night without feeding, occasionally needing a pacifier, which I explained earlier about. And about being consistent, my sister-in-law, uh, who has nine kids, when she was giving me advice when I was trying to do this process with my first son, she said to me, you have to be consistent because if you're not consistent and you give in and you feed them and you hold them and you pick them up, whatever you do to calm them down, then all their crying that they cry those few minutes or those crying that they cry even longer, then all their crying was in vain and you made them cry for no reason because you weren't trying to teach them. If you're in the process and they're crying for a few short nights and you know that the goal is to get them to sleep, which is great for you and for them, then you really have to be consistent and make sure you don't give in to make it all go to waste. And two final tips is the first one has to do with scheduling during the day, nap time and food time. You want your baby, if he's at home or if he's in daycare, you want him to have a pretty set schedule when it comes to napping and eating. And of course, you know, you could be flexible, but you want it to be pretty much set 
so that you know that he's getting all the calories he needs during the day and also not napping too much during the day so that he could sleep as much as he needs, basically 11 hours during the night. So you could look, I'm gonna link below um, how much they're supposed to sleep during the day. If it's two, three hours, make sure that they don't sleep more than that so that they won't be sleeping too much during the day. You really want to make sure that you're with the windows of your uh, baby's age. And the most important tip is that you have to be realistic with your baby. There's gonna be nights where they're teething, they're not feeling well, they wake up early, and they could still have difficult nights, but at least at most nights you know that you're gonna be sleeping good and your baby's gonna be sleeping good, but you have to be realistic. There's still a baby and things can happen and this time really does fly by and we want to enjoy it as much as possible and remember that they're just babies. Hopefully really soon you and your baby will be sleeping um, much better during the night. Hope this video was helpful to you and if you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up. See you next time.